Okay, so in class we made pinhole cameras. And your homework talks about how can we affect the size of the image we produce in our pinhole camera. And we can look at that by using a ray diagram within the camera to see how the image is produced and then what can we change to make that image size change. So let's recreate sort of what that pinhole camera looks like inside. So here we have our camera, that tube that we used. And here is the pinhole. And we will put our screen at this location. And we're looking in here, so here's our, here's our eyeball. All right. So I'm going to draw over here. Here's our tree that we looked at outside. How does the image of the tree get through the pinhole and onto that screen? Well, if we think about the tree as producing its own light, so sending light waves out in all directions and in straight lines, we know that the top of the tree is doing that. And one of those rays of light that it's sending out will make it through the pinhole and will hit the screen. That ray of light represents the top of the tree. Similarly, the bottom of the tree is doing the same thing, and one of those rays of light will go through that pinhole and hit the screen in a straight line. It'll hit the top of the screen. All of the parts of the tree do the exact same thing, and we see that the tree image is produced on the screen and upside down. We talked about that in class. Well, how can I change the size of this image? What happens if I change the location of the screen? What if I put my screen closer to the pinhole? That doesn't change what happens with the rays of light. They still enter the same pinhole, the same number still enter based on the size of that pinhole. But as they come through, now the top of the tree hits at this location on the screen. And the bottom of the tree hits at this location on the screen. And all the rays of light in between hit the, tree, hit the screen, and my tree image is produced on that screen. And what do we notice? It's smaller in size. The light rays intersected the screen, reproduced that image earlier in their path, and they didn't have as much time to spread out and enlarge that image. So similarly, if I move the screen further back, now our light rays have more time to spread out. The bottom of the tree hits at that location on the screen. The top of the tree hits at that location on the screen. The light rays have spread out even more. And our tree image is larger. So changing the location of the tree changes the size of the image. And we can see that using that ray diagram um, technique that we've been learning about. Good job.